a Labour lawyer and former Chamber of Commerce Business um, uh, member Michael Bagram says that South Africa is facing an economic collapse if the government bows to pressure exerted by trade unions. Now, Bagram says that uh, South Africa gets, as we get nearer to the election year in 2024, the government is in for tough times and it is likely to appease trade unions and give in to their demands. Now in 2022, the government approved 3% wage increase despite unions uh, demand of more than 6% increase uh, that was demanded by them. Now Bagram anticipates that the government will give in to the trade unions and will appease uh, their demands or rather agree to their demands uh, which will then lead to a collapse of the public purse and the state. Now Mac Michael Bagram joins us us now to have a conversation about this. Michael, thanks for your time. Uh, welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Thanks for having me on air. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So you say that South Africa is on the cusp of collapse. And in your view, this is based on your observation that since uh, next year is an election year, a government is uh, likely to give in to demands from workers uh, through the unions. But um, it would be interesting to understand where exactly that view stems from and why you feel as though this is going to push us over the precipice. Well, it's quite obvious they've done that in the past. Every single time they're relying almost entirely on the Kasatu vote. And as we come to the elections, quite rightly, Kasatu uses that as a bargaining tool to say we're either behind you or we're not behind you. And if we don't get what we need and what we want, then we're going to actually go on this massive strike, first of all, and we're going to withdraw our vote, which is vital for the ANC government. So let, let's face it, it happened with the transport strike. I don't know if you recall, uh, almost a year ago now, the transport strike happened. The government said all we can afford, and they did their homework, all we can afford is 3%. The union said, no, we wanted 10%, but we'd settle at 6 And lo and behold, after three days of strike and crippling the harbours, the ports, the bottom line was the government caved in to pay what they couldn't afford to pay, and they can't afford to pay. Now they've done their research again, the government, and I understand where the unions are coming from. The unions are saying, you stole the money. You can't now tell us that you can't afford to pay us because you stole the money. And that's where they're coming from. And they also need the increase because of the state of play has become so horrific. You go into a, a shop and you buy a basket of goods, it costs double uh, what it cost five years ago. So the bottom line is well, there's a demand for 10% now. And they'll probably settle at six exactly the same. And so I can write, I can write the script for you what will happen. And we know that government can only afford and ill afford the 3%. And in fact, government has already unilaterally implemented that, which has irritated and angered the trade unions radically. And with the COSATU basically has uh, the majority of the membership, trade union membership within the civil service. And if they don't get their 6%, then they will go on that massive strike and they'll withdraw their vote. And government just can't afford it. So it's a scorched earth policy. The, the ANC government right now will cave in. I, I'm telling you right now, they'll cave in. They'll give the 6%. They bloated. It's a bloated civil service. It's paid more than the, uh, the workforce outside the civil service. And unfortunately, government's got no choice. They're going to have to do that to the extent that they will bankrupt the country, which is almost bankrupt anyway, and also they will then have to eventually renege on that increase because they won't be able to pay it. And we've seen that. We've seen that play itself out. You recall four years ago, they agreed on a three-year wage agreement. They implemented the wage agreement, paid the first year, paid the second year, and then reneged on the third year. They didn't have the money. And they came for some technical reason and went off to court and won on a technicality. They've angered the trade unions. And in fact, they're using the trade unions as voting fodder. That's the bottom line. And, and I think we're going to see that exactly the same. Not think, I know we're going to see that. And it's going to be horrific for all of us in the country, for all the, the, the rest of the population. It's going to be absolutely horrific. 
because already the government is not providing what they need to provide in terms of service delivery. If they've got no money, well, we're not going to see any service delivery. It's a horrific set of circumstances. The only way they can justify the paying the 6% is by halving the workforce, and they haven't got the guts to do that either. So, you know, when you talk about what's happened in the past, as you say, you can literally write the script uh, of how this is going to play out. Uh, but when government actually reneges, when it goes back on its word as to what was agreed upon at collection uh, during the collective bargaining process, is that not unethical? Not only unethical, it's duplicitous. I think, I think it's a dishonest, absolutely dishonest, because they sat there. The ministers sat there, the bargaining people who had their mandate to settle at that figure actually signed on the bottom line. The trade unions then went away and said, yes, it's a little bit less than what we wanted, but we'll accept it, we take their word for it, we trust them. Because they're in a tripartite alliance. The Kasatu, ANC and the Communist Party are in an alliance. And if you stab your alliance partner in the back, that I think is more than unethical. That's plain, simple dishonest. And in fact, I don't believe at the moment, I don't believe that the trade unions trust the government at all. I certainly don't. I would never be happy to sit around the table negotiating with an ANC government right now. Just forget about it because they've shown that they're completely duplicitous in their behavior. So once one can understand that uh, the state is of course bleeding and that money is in short supply the reality for most south africans is also that there's a runaway you know cost of living that we're contending with at the moment so how do you actually you know balance these two because on the one hand, um, some would like to argue that, you know, the unions should not be holding um, government uh, to ransom. But on the other hand, people need to live. And we know the cost of everything is going up around us. So how do people continue to uh, make ends meet, even though they are working uh, when they are not getting salary increments? I, I fully understand it. And I'm, I'm fully behind the trade unions on this one because... They're saying you would have the money if you didn't steal it. If you didn't waste the money, you didn't steal the money, and it didn't frittle it away uh, through all sorts of other problems, then you would have had the money for us. And I look, it's, it's, I, I don't have that Solomonic wisdom where I can find a middle path over here. I just don't have it. But I do know that this is caused by the government themselves. They have not only caused the fact that they don't have the money, it's their fault. They have literally, their own people have stolen the money. You'll probably find billions of rands elsewhere, which should have been in the public coffers. We saw that through the Zondo Commission. So you can understand what the unions are thinking. They're saying, you guys stole it, and now you're telling us you don't have money. It's very similar to a, um, a person who had killed his parents and asked the court for uh, some sort of mercy because he's now an orphan. Um, you, you can't give government mercy when they've actually stolen the money which should have found its way into the public coffers and used for staffing and for service delivery. And of course what's happened is that every single trade union member is feeling it in their pocket. They go into the store to buy f bread for their family and that bread is now double the price. So you can understand where they're coming from and I sympathize with it. What I don't sympathize is I don't sympathize with government. The problem is that we, the people of South Africa, are sitting over here and watching this play out. You know, it's the old, I think it's a Zulu phrase where two bull elephants are having a fight and the grass gets trampled. So the citizens will get trampled in this fight. And we need government to be able to reorganize itself. We probably need a new government quite radically now, uh, we're on that cusp in 2024, to actually sit down with the trade unions and say, let's work this out together and not unilaterally implement a 3% like we've just seen the Minister of Employment and Labor do. Um, and that, that was the most disgusting behavior I've ever seen from a minister, where he just, oh, he knew they were fighting, he knew they were still negotiating and he implemented a 3% increase. That would anger me, it would anger every single trade union in the world.
as it has angered our local trade unions. Um, now, the question I would imagine some government uh, minister sitting there and saying, what is he talking about? Uh, Michael, when you say that government has stolen the money, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Uh, because people will well, say that's not true. We haven't done any such. Uh, we are in the job. If we did anything, uh, uh, the, 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 the most popular phrase is uh, pr provide the proof, go and lay a charge uh, so that people can be investigated and dealt with. Well, all you need to do is have a cursory look at the Zondo Commission. I haven't had the, the, the enough time to read the entire commission, but I've started reading it. I started reading it four months ago, and I can tell you right now that there is absolute proof and they have laid charges, and we are hoping that our prosecution authority does actually go ahead and do it. We can see it playing itself out with ESCOM right now. Everyone, everyone is accusing everyone else, but the money has been stolen. It's disappeared. Uh, who did it and how did they do it? Well, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't have that information. But it's, uh, money came in and the money went out and it wasn't spent on power stations. So uh, to say that it wasn't stolen, well, money doesn't disappear. It doesn't evaporate. What money does is it finds its way into the wrong pockets in this particular government. This is there. It's a common practice. And the Zondo Commission is the most wonderful document to read. It's sad, it's depressing, and it's, it's the most horrible thing to, to understand. But at the end of the day, for anyone to come forward and say that government didn't do that, and high-ranking people, high-ranking politicians, people with connections have stolen the money, that money hasn't found its way into the trade union pockets, I can tell you right now, and it certainly hasn't found its way into service delivery. You just need to look at the whole country, other than obviously the Western province, but you need to have a look at the rest of the country. There's no service delivery. I don't know how the people can survive. I just don't understand that. I, I often sit there and I think, well, imagine if I was not middle class, where, where would I turn? I'd probably turn to crime and drugs and whatever. It, it, it is a horrible situation. We've got good people in this country and they've been ill-treated. That's the bottom line. And so you can understand fully why the trade unions are threatening this mother of all strikes. And also, uh, trade unions also angered, uh, you know, questioning uh, the raise in uh, salaries for senior government officials, uh, backdating that to 2021. And, you know, it, it, that's a lot of money considering uh, the injustice when it comes to uh, uh, lower level workers and their demands. Uh, what do you think should be done there? Well, quite simply, first of all, the senior workers shouldn't get an increase because they haven't delivered on their job. So they shouldn't get it. That's the first thing. Uh, if they were in private practice or in the private sector, they wouldn't get an increase at all. Secondly, we need to take those senior managers and halve them. Uh, we don't need that many people. You have uh, 20 people watching one man work. It, it, you don't need that at all. And, and as the trade unions will tell you, and I'm no trade unionist, and I'm certainly not speaking on behalf of the trade unions, but they'll tell you that if you got rid of that senior management group, you'd easily be able to afford the 6% increase that they say they deserve. That would be an easier exercise. Um, what we really need to do at the end of the day is restructure the civil service. They bloated, they overpaid, and of course people are there who are not fit for purpose. We have that cadre deployment where it's the, the senior people, they're the cadres, they come in, they're just there to collect a check and possibly to steal as much as possible, and that the person on the ground, the man digging the ditch, is being paid next to nothing. And that's the, that's the irony of the situation. The man that's actually working is getting very little. The man that doesn't do any work, not interested, and in fact can't do the work, is getting an absolute fortune. Well, Michael, we're going to have to leave it there. Um, we are out of time, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, Labour lawyer um, and uh, formerly with the Chamber of Commerce uh, and Business, Michael Bagram, anticipating a fiscal collapse if government, in fact, agrees to a 6% wage increase because of a fear of losing power in 2026. Always welcome to let us know your views at Morning Live SABC.